All right, what's up, YouTube? Back for another uh, quick hit, quick reaction for week two. Another great week of football, another great week of fantasy football, all that shit. Um, so, sorry. Um, so, let's start off with uh, Thursday night's game, which was the Steelers Ravens. And we saw the Ravens just kind of shit on the Steelers. Uh, Steelers defense is not what they used to be. And the Ravens kind of uh, <clears throat> exposed that. Uh, Bernard Pierce is clearly the number one back there. So people who are high on Justin Forsett, you are wrong. Pierce is getting the carries. Um, in terms of receiving, Torrey Smith uh, had three targets. This is the second week in a row he's been behind Dennis Pitta and Steve Smith in terms of targets. Steve Smith is emerging as the number one receiver there. Um, I don't think he's consistent enough to be started every week. In 10-team leagues, maybe 12-team leagues, you could do it uh, as a flex or, or a wide receiver, two, three, whatever. Uh, week four, you definitely want to start him. I don't know if you guys saw this, but he went on a fucking rant on the sidelines the other day about how he's going to fuck up the Panthers, how they shouldn't have traded him, and whatever. I don't know. Or let him go. And uh, So he's a must-start in week four. I'll put the video of him freaking out uh, in the description down low. So, uh, yeah, Steve Smith looks to be the number one guy there. I don't know. Torrey Smith, I'm sure, will have a bounce back soon, but he's he's just not producing this year. So, uh, can't really play him at the moment. For the uh, Steelers, we saw Le'Veon Bell. Um, didn't put up big numbers, but you could see if you watch the game, he was shifty. He looked he looks awesome. Uh, so, he's a high-end. He's a, an elite RB1 right now for anyone. You're starting him every week regardless of the matchup, and uh, maybe unless you're in Seattle, but that's – it's a whole other story, but um, yeah, Bell's Bell's legit and uh, good for everyone who drafted him. Next game, we'll move to the Falcons Bengals. We saw a lot of passes on the Falcons side, forty four compared to nineteen rushes. So, for those who are banking on Jackson, Stephen Jackson this year, it's not that he's not going to put up good numbers. He could, he's a flex play at very best in twelve team leagues um, at the moment. Uh, Roddy White has sat out of practice today uh, and yesterday, so he obviously he's a vet. He doesn't need the practice reps and to know the system and whatnot. He already knows it, so if he's okay to go, he'll play the game regardless of practicing. But uh, if he sits out, Harry Douglas is the guy you want to pick up if you're looking for a receiver. He played really well with Matt Ryan last year when Julio and uh, Roddy White were dinged up. So they have chemistry, and he's been with the team for a while, so they're uh, they're good together. Um, in terms of the Bengals, we saw Gio get his 32 touches, which is huge for owners just to know that he's going to keep getting these uh, RB1 touches. Um, I'm, I'm a Gio owner, so I'm pumped about that. And uh, Jeremy Hill also got his 17 touches. They did say that uh, that he was going to get way more involved in the offense, and they weren't kidding. So the Bengals stuck to their word. Um, and, yeah, both of them are going to keep getting uh, touches or Regardless, from here on out, obviously Bernard's the guy who's going to get 25 touches a game. Jeremy Hill's a good, solid option to pick up if you need a running back in deeper leagues. And um, AJ Green got hurt with his foot injury. He didn't practice yesterday. He didn't practice today. Today's Wednesday. Um, he's going to try to practice on it Thursday and see if he can go. He wants to play this week. Um, my gut feeling is that he doesn't go. I don't think he's going to play this week. And if that's the case, you want to pick up Muhammad Sanu. He's going to be the guy who fills in for him. He's a real athletic wide receiver. Um, big play capability. Uh, very athletic. He threw a 50-yard bomb last week uh, through a pass. So it's just like he, he can attack the uh, defense from a number of different ways. I'm sure he'll put up numbers as the uh, number one wide receiver over there. Let's move to the Dolphins and the Bills. We saw Sammy Watkins finally have his breakout game. Now, I'm sold on Sammy Watkins. I've been sold on him before the year even started. He's going to be an elite wide receiver one day in this league, but I don't trust EJ Manuel enough uh, to be consistent and be able to deliver Watkins the ball um, and give him those numbers. So um, Watkins is a flex play, I want to say right now, going forward. Um C.J. Spiller and Fred Jackson both got 12 carries, um, so they're pretty even there. C.J. Spiller was way more effective. He busted out like a 50-yard run. So like I said last time, um, as long as C.J. Spiller keeps getting the, the touches, he's too explosive of a player not to put up big numbers. Even if he touches the ball 12 times, if one of those busts out for a 40 or 50-yard run, he's going to have a pretty good day fantasy-wise. So he's someone um, right now, I'd put him at like a low-end RB2.
keep him in as a flex. Uh, the Dolphins, no Sean Moreno left the game with an elbow injury. He's going to be out a while. I think it's four to eight weeks or something like that. So Lamar Miller will be there every down back. Big pickup. Um, I'm really not in love with the guy. Uh, I don't think he's ultra talented, but he's going to be there every down back. He's going to get the receptions. He's going to get the carries. So from here on out, he's uh, he's an RB2 with RB1 upside if they can, uh, they can block well and produce over there in Miami. Another big surprise, Mike Wallace, man. I wasn't high on him this preseason, but him and uh, Tannehill, I guess, are clicking a little bit. Not huge numbers, but he's he's putting up good numbers right now. Let's see. Jacksonville and Washington. All right, this is just, okay, this is a lot to talk about, I guess. Nothing from Jacksonville's side. Alan Hearns got hurt. Toby Gerhardt was horrible. So, uh, Toby Gerhardt, I don't think you could really play right now. Maybe as a flex if you don't have any other good options, but um, otherwise I'm sitting him. From Washington, RG3 gets hurt. Looks like it's pretty serious. He's supposed to be out for, he's just out indefinitely. Kirk Cousin comes in, of course. Naturally uh, does work so that ESPN can stop, not stop talking about it for about two weeks now. Um, anyone who's worried about Alfred Morris, you shouldn't be. He's by far the best rusher on their team. He's a great runner. Uh, he's going to get the carries. It's just a matter of how the game flows because usually Washington either gets down big or they get up big, and if they're down, he's not going to get the carriers. But I wouldn't worry about him. He's an every week starter. Um, how the one with D, uh, Deshaun Jackson went down, he's day to day, so he might not play. They don't know yet. Um, I'll keep you updated on Twitter. Uh, I'll put my Twitter info down down there so you guys could uh, follow me, and I'll keep you updated on all injury updates and shit. Um, the guy you want to go out and get is. Uh, is the tight end for the Redskins. He is um, filling in for Jordan Reed. His name's Niles Paul. Uh, he had eight receptions, 99 yards, and a touchdown. In the second week in a row, he's put up solid numbers coming in for Jordan Reed. If Deshaun Jackson doesn't play, you could expect Niles to get upwards of 12 targets or something like that and definitely putting up good numbers. So um, I would... If you're looking for a tight end, if you really don't have one of the top three or four tight ends in the league, I'm talking Jimmy Graham, Gronk, um, Julius Thomas, and whether or not Vernon Davis plays soon, uh, I would really suggest getting Niles Paul because I think he's going to be a top five, top seven uh, tight end this week. Cowboys, Titans. All right, Cowboys came away with the 26-10 win. However, Romo kind of looked like shit. Well, him and uh, Des Bryant would look unstoppable for times, and then... Other than that, Tony Romo just does not look great. Um, I think he's one for nine on balls so far this year, over 20 yards. So um, he hasn't looked good, but he should have a nice bounce back game this week. I still, I still am sold on Tony Romo, man. I know it's uh, it's not an encouraging start, but don't give up on the guy yet. If he, uh, if you have a better option at QB, I'd play him. But if not, I wouldn't worry that much yet. Still plenty of season left. Uh, DeMarco Murray, the number one running back in fantasy right now. Um, everyone knew he had the talent coming in. It's always a question of the health with him. So if he could stay healthy, he's going to continue being that huge running back that you need. Um, let's see, from the Titans side, okay. They ran the ball 13 times in the entire game. Um, Bishop Sankey got two rushes. So I, he had so much hype in the preseason coming in. Clearly, uh, he's not getting to the top of the totem pole there anytime soon. Luckily for me, I hope some of you guys picked him up. Uh, Delaney Walker, 10 catches, 142 yards, and a touchdown. I needed a tight end a couple of my leagues, and uh, luckily I picked him up, and he did work for me. So he is a, he's a pretty solid tight end going uh, from here on out. I, not great, but like a low-end tight end one. So if you're looking for a guy... Uh, I first suggest Niles Paul, who I said for the Redskins before, but Delaney Walker would be still on the wire. Uh, in terms of Jake Locker, he's a guy that you stream. Uh, he shouldn't be your starting quarterback, but if he has a good matchup, like say I think he had, plays the Raiders in a couple of weeks, that's a guy you could definitely play. All right, Cardinals-Giants, another poor showing from um, Eli, two interceptions. Um, he did get his yardage up, 277, two touchdowns. Um, but there's just this the offense just doesn't look good. Um, Shaw Jennings again getting 22 touches, so he's a guy you're keeping in your lineup. He's going to get the 20 touches or whatever catches, rushing the goal line work. So I wouldn't be too uh, wouldn't be worried about him at all. He's going to stay consistent. Um, in terms of a guy, I know Victor Cruz is probably a guy in a lot of people's minds, and I don't really 
I see him as a flex right now. If you have a better option at flex, someone who's like actually a legitimate flex option, someone like a Pierre Thomas this week or something like that, you're definitely starting him over Cruz. Until G-Man offensive line can prove that they could hold up, um, I you can't really trust them right now. Um, I know a lot of people are uh, looking for the tight end, Larry Donald, too. Um, he's looking like Eli's favorite target right now, and he's produced pretty good numbers in the last two games. So if you need a tight end, um, deeper league, he's a guy to go look at. Probably picked up already, but he, uh, he's got good hands, and he's going to keep getting targets, and he's going to keep getting get catches. So uh, it really is all dependent on uh, if Eli can get time and throw the ball. From the Cardinal side, Palmer didn't play, so the receivers couldn't really get anything going over there. Andre Ellington, 15 carries, 91 yards, a six, uh, six yards per carry average, which is good to see. I know like that foot is still a huge question mark, but clearly he looks pretty healthy, so he's definitely a, uh, a running back two uh, going forward. Let's move to the Patriots-Vikings. All right, this was just a mess with Adrian Peterson out. Asiata, I luckily picked him up for this week, started him in one of my leagues, and he... He's just not talented enough to put up consistent numbers for you, so I wouldn't suggest uh, starting him. I definitely would keep him just because Peterson is going to be out for who knows how long could be the entire season, but he's not talented enough to put up consistent numbers. He had the one uh, touchdown catch, but other than that, he didn't put up great numbers. From the New England side, something interesting was Stephen Ridley, 25 carries for 101 yards. It's just another... It's another example of how you can't really trust the Patriots in their uh, their running back situation. Everyone coming into this week was, oh, oh Shane Vereen's going to be top five, top ten running back, and you just don't know. It's hard. It's hard to uh, it's hard to play a running back from that team um, higher than a flex play because, except for PPR, I would still stick with Shane Vereen. I wouldn't go uh, go away from him because he's going to get the catches. I know it was one off week, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's just how the flow of the game went, I guess. They were feeling Ridley. He didn't fumble the ball for the first time in forever. And um, that's that's really how it went. So Ridley uh, is a guy definitely to keep your eye on. Because remember, in 2012, he had like 1,200 yards and 12 touchdowns or something like that. A really, really good fantasy season. And uh, if he can get back to anywhere close to those numbers, he's going to be an asset to you. So uh, don't drop him. Just yet, uh, because clearly Belichick still has a little confidence in him. Edelman's their number one receiver at the moment. Uh, don't panic about Gronk either. Uh, one bad game. You know how athletic Gronk is. As long as he can get snaps and as long as he stays healthy, he's going to put up numbers for you in the end. The Saints-Browns. Good game. Great game, actually. That last drive Brian Hoyer fucking put together was incredible. Um, and I'm rooting for Johnny Manziel, but whatever. <laughs> Got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, Jimmy Graham had his big bounce back game. I don't think anyone was worried about him after one week. Uh, unfortunate for the Saints, Mark Ingram went down. I think he has a broken hand now out at least four weeks. So now they're going to split the carries between Kyrie Robinson and Pierre Thomas. Um, both pretty good options, actually. I see them both as, uh, I guess, PPR. Pierre Thomas moves up to uh, an RB2 in my book. He's going to get probably five to eight targets um, next few games. Uh, he'll probably get upwards of 10 carries also. Kyrie Robinson should get 12 to 15 carries. So both decent options at running back if you need someone in deeper leagues. Um, Drew Brees, like people have been saying this, they're pointing out that Drew Brees does not play that well on the road, which uh, is apparent, I guess, but he's still an elite QB, so you're not seeing him regardless of where he's going. Um, Cleveland, okay. Terrence West, another 21 touches, uh, 95 yard or 90 yards and a touchdown. It's a clear RB1 over there. Uh, he's getting the 20 touches. He'll get the goal line work. Well, most of the goal line work. Uh, Isaiah Crowell also got 11 touches. So um, they're going to mix in there. I guess they're running back by committee with West having the edge in there. So uh, you could start Terrence West as an RB2 with uh, pretty good confidence, I think. They're a high running team. They're gonna they're gonna hand the ball off every single week, and they're gonna do it a lot. So, um, so you can start him with confidence, knowing he's gonna get his touches regardless. Detroit versus Carolina. Uh, Cam Newton came back, had a big game, 280 yards and a touchdown. He looked good. Uh, without D'Angelo Williams, the rushing game kind of looked like shit. Jonathan Stewart he pummeled into the end zone to save uh, 
to save the day for any uh, fantasy owners that started him. So um, that was good, I guess. But uh, Kelvin Benjamin, the the rookie that I'm real high on, uh, only two catches for 46 yards, but he did have eight targets. So in time, uh, as Cam and him play together more, those targets will turn into receptions. Um, they get their chemistry up. Kelvin Benjamin is going to lead the team in targets this year. He's probably going to re- lead the team in receptions. Uh, maybe not receptions, I guess Greg Olson might, but in terms of yards and touchdowns, uh, Kelvin Benjamin's the guy to own there, man. He's going to be good. He's going to have a big bounce back week this week, I bet. Uh, Stafford, okay, Joyke Bell, 10 carries to Reggie Bush is 6. Um, also, 6 catches to Reggie Bush is 2. So, like, a lot of people expected this preseason. Um, sorry, hold on one second. Um, a lot of people expect this preseason Bell's going to out-touch Reggie, and Bell looks like the better back right now. Um, it's hard to trust Reggie, in especially in standard formats, because Bell's getting more of the carries, going to get the goal line carries, and Joyke Bell's even getting more uh, targets and more. He had 11 targets last game. So uh, the lines look to dump off the running backs a lot, and if Joyke Bell's going to be in the game more than Reggie Bush is, um, Joke Bell's the guy to own. So if you could sell Reggie Bush high right now to someone in your league who, for some reason, still thinks he's going to be a huge asset, do so. Um, Reggie Bush right now is a flex play at best. In PPR leagues, he's a low-end RB2, maybe RB2 straight. Uh, Bell is Bell's a legitimate RB2 right now with the touches that he's getting. So, yeah. Let's move to the Rams and Bucks. A Let's see, okay, so we had Zach Stacy coming in with 19 carries as opposed to Cunningham six. So once again, we found out that Stacy's the guy there. He got the goal line carry um, for the touchdown. Bobby Rainey came in because Doug Martin wasn't playing, so he is expected to play on Thursday night. They had a short short week, um, but he practiced Tuesday, he practiced Wednesday, and he's gonna. Uh... I'm sorry again. He's. He's going to play Thursday, which makes both of them very shaky, uh, very risky plays. But I give Martin the slight edge because he practiced with the starters. He took all the first team reps, and the Atlanta defense is just fucking awful. And it hurts to say because I'm a dirty bird, but it's the truth. Um, so it's likely that Lovey Smith will ride the hot hand. And if uh, Doug Martin gets a start, he has a better chance, obviously, of staying in. So Bobby Rainey will get his touches, but. Um, Compared to the 25 he got last week, it, that shit's not going to happen. So don't start Bobby Rainey anywhere more than a flex play. Doug Martin's the guy with the slight edge there, I'd say. Um, Brian Quick is coming up as a pretty solid receiver for the um, for the Rams. Seven receptions in the first two games, uh, 170 yards combined. So if he can get a couple, uh, he's leading them in targets. If he can get a couple touchdowns thrown in there, you know, I think it's, uh, I think the receptions and the targets, it's only a matter of time before the touchdowns start coming. So quick is the receiver to get there. That's that's pretty deep, though. That's a deeper league. Um, don't start him in 10, 12 team leagues. If you have 14 team league, maybe a PPR league, uh, something like that, he's a good option to go to late. Uh, let's get, I got to start running through these quick. It's almost at 20 minutes. Damn. All right. Seahawks, Chargers. Chargers are the big win. Um, Antonio Gates rose from the dead. He three touchdown catches from Rivers. Uh, for everyone that was very high on Ladarius Green, you're a fucking idiot. No, I'm kidding. Um, he uh, he had no targets, no receptions, so that says a lot. Uh, Antonio Gates was the man there. And now that Ryan Matthews went down, um, Donald Brown's going to step into that early down back and that goal line back. So he was a big pickup this week off the uh, waiver wire. So if you got him, that's good. You could start him as an RB2. Uh, he should get 15 touches around there. So um, so he's a good option. Danny Woodhead's a good option in PPR plays because he's going to see an increase in touches also. Russell Wilson stayed consistent, obviously. Marshall Lynch only got six carries, but um, I think that was more the flow of the game because uh, they, they rushed the ball a uh, team combined 13 times, so it's not like anyone else got a lot of rushes. Turbin had two rushes. Um, Wilson had two rushes. Percy Arvin had two rushes. So Lynch still led the team in rushes. just a matter of uh, how the game went. So I wouldn't worry at all about Marshawn. Uh, Percy Arvin got very lucky on that fucking touchdown run. He stepped out of bounds, man. I don't know I don't know what kind of conspiracies the NFL is about right now or what kind of money they had on the fucking over in this game. But clearly they, uh, clearly they didn't give a shit. Let's move to the Texans Raiders. All right, um, Foster again with the uh, 
with the 30 touches, man. He's going to stay. They did say this week that they're going to split up the carries more going forward, but I don't know why they've changed the game plan up now. They're 2-0. and Things are working very good. Foster's looking like a young area. I mean, he's not old, but you know what I mean. From a couple of years ago before, the injuries were a big concern. He looks good. Um, from the Oakland side, James Jones had his big game. Uh, he's definitely a good receiver. I mean, he led the NFL in touchdowns a couple of years ago, but I just think the Raiders are just not a good enough team. Um, they just are not consistent enough to have James Jones put up consistent numbers. So I wouldn't look too far into that big game from him. He could be a deeper pickup, though, if you need. No one else on the Raiders is worth owning. Neither, uh, neither from the Texans. Well, anyone that you didn't already know about. We had Jets, Green Bay. Okay, Jordy Nelson with a huge game. Um, he, I was so high on him this preseason. I, I clearly, I still am, and I was right about that. He's their number one guy in a huge passing uh, offense. So he's gonna keep putting up wide receiver one numbers. Eddie Lacy, don't worry about Eddie Lacy. He's gonna, he's gonna be fine. He'll bounce back. He's got two tough, uh, two tough games. I mean, you're in Seattle. You're not gonna do shit, regardless of what running back you are. Um, against the Jets, very good run defense also. So I wouldn't look too far into it. He only got 13 carries, I'm sure. In the following games, he's going to get his 20-plus carries, and he'll put up goal line touchdowns and all that shit. So don't don't even worry about him. Don't sell him. If you could buy him low for some reason, if someone's selling him, get his ass right now. Um, that's about it for that. Kansas City and Denver. Uh, okay, the big news, obviously, Jamal Charles went down with that ankle injury early, and he, uh, Andy Reid said they believe it's a high ankle sprain, which sucks because high ankle sprains, obviously, are an injury that it lingers. It, uh, it could cost him anywhere from three weeks to, it could linger for the whole year. He might come back on it too early and re-injure it worse. Uh, if he tries to rest it, it might take a long time to come back, so it's something you need to keep an eye on. Um, he's not going to play this week. I, they haven't officially ruled him out. But Niall Davis, he's the number one waiver wire pickup this week. If you got him, good for you. I got him in a couple of my leagues. Very pumped about that. He's going to step right into Jamal Charles' uh, spot. He's going to be the number one back. 20 carries, probably five receptions, something like that. So um, so he's a, he's honestly, he moves right into like an, a low-end RB1 with, with high-end RB1 potential right there just because of the situation he goes in. He's a talented back, too. He looks very good. So... Um, it's not just the situation that he's in. It's it's, it's him as a runner, too. Uh, Monte Ball, um, 12 carries, 60 yards. I mean, I, I, like I said last week, I'm not, I wasn't sold on him preseason. Uh, most people were so high on him just because of the situation he's in with Denver. And they're like, oh, if Noshan can do it, he can too. But now we're seeing Noshan's a legit rusher. Uh, goes over to Miami, puts up big numbers. He got hurt, unfortunately. But... Clearly, he wasn't just a product of the system. He's a good rusher, and you're going to need to be a very good back in order to succeed in the system. So, Monte Ball, I wouldn't sell him just yet, but for the right price, I would definitely give him away. If someone's offering, like, an elite wide receiver, someone's offering something like that, I would, I probably would, uh, I probably would let him go. Bears, Niners, uh, okay. Huge game for Cutler in terms of touchdowns. He started off horribly. Uh, I know the story of the game pregame was Marshall and Jeffrey. Are they going to play? A lot of people are saying they weren't going to play. Um, you had to kind of follow that all the way up to game time. I know a lot of my friends sat Marshall in their leagues, and obviously that fucked them over. I, um, you know, there's just certain like Twitter accounts and shit you follow. You got to follow Matthew Berry, Brad Evans, uh, a bunch of other guys that are good with fantasy football. They'll give you like up to the minute uh, updates. So I knew Marshall was going to play. And Marshall is a tough dude. Um, so I started him, obviously put up huge numbers for me. So as the week goes by, they're going to get more healthy, him and Jeffrey. So have confidence in starting them. Uh, we finally saw a good game out of Crabtree. Uh, I, honestly, I'm going to expect that from from now on with uh, Crabtree. Seven catches, 82 yards, and a touchdown. Um, he's their number one receiver over there. He's going to get the most targets. He's going to get the most looks. And by the end of the year, he will be their uh, leading receiver. So uh, don't sell Crabtree. Um, he's only going to get better from here on as uh, Kaepernick improves as well. Uh, okay, so last game, Monday Night Game, Eagles-Colts. Another awesome fucking game. Um, Nick Foles did not look good again, missing a lot. He put up good numbers for fantasy perspective, but he's missing a lot of targets. Should have had 
another touchdown with Jeremy Macklin. Um, but other than that, the Eagles offense look good, man. Um, Sean McCoy only averaging four yards a carry in that game, but there's literally nothing to worry about there. He scored a touchdown, another four catches for 23 yards. Darren Sproles is obviously the big story of this game. Darren Sproles is legit, man. Um, I had I had uh, some concerns coming into the season about him. I didn't think he was really going to get a lot of touches, but clearly uh, they have a whole game plan for him. He's extremely explosive, and he's moving up almost to an RB2. Probably, I'm going to say a low-end RB2 um, in PPR formats, 0.5 PPR, because, I mean, the dude's clearly explosive, and he's going to break out. But the lack of touches, if you're only going to get 8 to 10 touches a game, if you don't have one of those big breakout runs, if you don't have a 60-yard catch, uh, that fucks you over. And he's going to end up only with somewhere like 5 points at the end of the day. And that's not what you want from your uh, when you're starting running backs. Andrew Luck, another good performance. Uh, Trent Richardson, 21 carries, 79 yards. Another 3.8 uh, yards per carry. Not impressive. Um I don't know what the fuck the Colts are doing, but it's only a matter of time before Bradshaw gets the start over there. He clearly looks like the better runner. 5.4 yards per carry. He's more explosive. He's more shifty. Fucking Trent Richardson looks like he needs to turn a full 90 degrees before he, like, changes direction. He's, like, cutting through a hole, changes, goes this way, and then cuts that way. Like, it's, like, it's in fucking slow-mo. He looks like... I don't even... He looks like a fucking snail. I don't know why they're still playing him. He lost a fumble. Um... But yeah, if you can get Bradshaw, I know the waiver wire probably uh, came today, but if you can get Bradshaw in your league, uh, I think sooner rather than later, he's going to be the number one back over there in Indianapolis. Um, yeah, anyways, let's see. Uh, what else can I talk about? Zach Ertz, another big game. He was a guy I was high on. Um, talked about him last week. Uh, so he's going to keep putting up consistent numbers. He's really freakishly athletic. Um, so Zach Ertz is j- your boy. Jeremy Macklin, uh, 11 targets, man. He's he's a clear number one receiver over there. Uh, as long as Foles can improve a little bit and get him the ball, uh, Macklin's a safe wide receiver, too, uh, from here on going forward. I think he's got some wide receiver one potential, too, to be honest with you. So so that's that. Um, hope you enjoyed. Um, and I guess I'll see you sometime this week, maybe next week, whatever. I don't know. Go check out my blog, adpkings.com. Peace.